So here it is, new bike day, the Giant Revolt Advanced 2. The Advanced 2, Advanced meaning carbon, and 2 being the spec level. Which means that it has GRX 11 speed. Although, being giant, they've decided to cheap out and use FSA cranks. And what it does have, which I wasn't expecting, is Maxxis Rambler tyres, which I've set up tubeless. And uh, put on a couple of water bottle carriers and some pedals. So it's all ready to ride. And of course, that means that it's never going to look like this again. Once it's been ridden, that new bike shine, <laughs> cleanliness will go away. But there we go, that's life. I bought it to use and I'm sure it's going to get a lot of use. Uh, the colourway, the starry night, I don't know if you can see it in this, but it does have a sort of metallic fleck to it. And in the shop, I must say, it looked a little bit dull, but uh, out in the light, it does look quite attractive. Well, you joined me today for the first ride on the new Giant Revolt. The very creaky Giant Revolt. And I'm hoping that that creak is going to settle in. And first impression is, feels completely different to the track. And that's a good thing. Because I wanted a bike it felt different to the track. And don't get me wrong, I love the track. But I use it more for sort of endurance riding. And this, I want to use more gravel, more lanes, more cycle paths. Where you want a more agile bike. As many of you know, if you watch this channel on a regular basis, I've been on about getting a different bike, or another bike, for some time. And what I really wanted, I thought at the time, was a flat bar gravel bike. Because I think gravel bike is the only way to go for the type of riding I do. Which sounds odd when you go, yeah, but Steve, you spend a lot of time on the road. And you'd be right. But the roads are really shit. There are some good roads. But they tend to have a lot of traffic on. And they tend to be the main roads. And the problem with that is, most of the people on those roads hate cyclists. They get away from the traffic onto more minor roads and they're pretty crap. And I also like the ability to be able to go across gravel paths to link up roads. And the cycle paths I like to use are usually covered in all kinds of debris. But because I like the cycle paths and the off-road sections, I thought a flat bar gravel bike would be more nimble and more agile. Because the way I've got the track set up, it's definitely more distance and 
sort of long straight road type of riding. It's always interesting how cars just assume that they will have right of way because they're bigger. So in my search, I only came across two flat bar gravel bikes. And that was the Cube New Lane, or SL as it used to be called, and the Trek FX. And the Cube got dropped off the list quite quickly because they're saying they'll be available in December. Great. What's the point of advertising bikes? Which you can't get for another year. Because December will turn into January and February and by the time it actually arrives in the shop and you get it home, it'll be March. So I leaned towards the FX but then I rode one and it didn't feel very good at all. It was far too upright. felt like Mary Poppins on a shopping bike. It's awfully noisy. But like I said, first ride. Let's not get too hung up on that. Hopefully we get it sorted out. A couple of reviewers and various other people steered me to look at the Revolt. Because this model, the geometry has changed. The bottom bracket is lower. got the flip chip makes it more agile which seemed to be what I was looking for and I will say that one of the things that attracted me to this bike was the price for some reason the advance too has been heavily discounted so I got this bike 900 pounds cheaper than the list price. So this bike with its carbon frame is only 100 pounds more than the same spec aluminium. Not to mention the aluminium frame is matte black and it looks horrible. The guy in the shop said, yeah, it really divides opinion, that. Some people love it, some people hate it. And I'm well, if it is such a marmite colour, it seems odd. The giant have chosen not to give anybody a choice. If you want the top spec, aluminium, it's matte black or nothing. See, this is the sort of thing that I wanted it for. And the trek, I'd probably be getting off the bike and pushing it through there. And you do really sit in this bike. And it does feel quite agile. First impressions, obviously. So, the shop that I bought this from discounted it down to 1950 and I was happy with that because I wanted to buy it from a shop I wanted somewhere to take it back to if it went wrong but just before leaving home I noticed on their website that it said wheel price match and I'll be honest I didn't hold out much hope, but I thought, well, let's give it a try, because I've seen it for 1,900. It's only 50 quid, but you know. So I asked them, and they said yes. So effectively, I got my bottle cages and pedals for free. 
Ooh. That was a bit slipperier than I expected, but they couldn't get it ready for me on the day, which was fine. It was a Sunday, they had no workshop staff, so I asked them to set it up for me before I came to pick it up. And I picked it up yesterday. I still feel like I need to watch the old heart rate on these longer climbs because I haven't fully recovered yet. Oh look, the gate's open, it makes it easier. Oh dear. You know, you brought the bike to use, you've got to use it, but the first day out you're hoping to keep it clean. No such luck today. As I've said before, we don't do much gravel riding in Britain. It's mostly mud riding. I find it interesting when people ask the opinions on tyres. Well, if you live in America, don't ask a British person. Because we have such different conditions. So first impressions, 7.77 miles in, and the bike is comfy. Really comfy. Oh, it feels agile and it feels good on this gravel. Very confidence inspiring. Although I'm not going that fast because it's a new bike. But you know, yeah, this bike is comfortable. I just feel really good at the moment. And you sit in the bike, you don't sit on it. Oh, so yeah. I asked the shop to set it up for me and I told them what saddle height I wanted and so on. And uh, when I got it home yesterday, I just took it for a little ride around the block, make sure everything was bolted together and stuff for today's ride. And I actually thought they'd given me the wrong saddle height. I felt it was too low. But, I took it back in the house and measured it, and it's right. And there have been frame cracking issues on these advanced twos, and I took a gamble on that because I suspect that's why they're so heavily discounted. But Giants say they fixed the problem, and not only that, if it happens again, they'll replace the frame. So, I thought it was worth the gamble. Hope I'm right, hope it pays off. I feel like the tyres are a little bit slow on the road. Uh, understandably, I am riding into quite a headwind, so that's probably got more of an effect on it. But overall, If I mark me down, that's happy with my purchase. I love the GRX. Yeah, that's it. Race ahead. Make sure you're at the front of the queue for the red traffic light. Twat. Somebody on the YouTube was complaining about GRX, saying that gear changing was noisy. Now he wanted to, he wanted to be dead silent, so you didn't even notice you'd changed gear. And I thought, well, it's the satisfying clunk of the gear change that I really like about the GRX. So does the bike fit the bill? Well, first impressions, yes it does. <laughs>